The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. April the 10th through the 14th, we're having a faith clinic right here at 9101 Lou Drive at the Reality of the Gospel Ministry. That's right. We're going to have a faith clinic. We're going to get your faith together. Amen. Monday morning, 10 a.m. kicks it off. We're going to be here Monday through Friday, two services a day, the 10th through the 14th. That opening service, we're going to have uh, the faith technicians, Pastor Philip. Steele will be here the Monday morning and the Monday night. And then his wife, Pastor Michelle Steele, will be here Tuesday morning and Tuesday night. And then we're having Reverend Kathy Dorsch to come that Wednesday morning and Wednesday night. And then I will be your, your anchor man as always, but this time I'll be doing two. I'll be doing Thursday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, and Friday night. That's a faith clinic. Every service is going to be on your faith. The just shall live by his faith. And you got to get your faith together for this hour that we're living in. Too many things are happening. Too many sneak attacks are hitting the saints. You know, uh, one of my friends said, if you live casually, you will become a casualty. Well, that's not acceptable. You got to make a decision. When it comes to faith, you're not going to have a casual faith walk. So make plans to meet us here in all of these meetings. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you right here at 9101 Lou Drive. And guess what? She ain't need nothing. I don't remember us praying for her. She ain't want no prayer. See, you got it anyway. Shh. Matthew 8. See, that when you connect to the anointing, you got to connect to it by faith, by confidence. But there's also character that goes with the one that's anointed. And if the one that's anointed don't have character, disconnect quick. I got a friend right now, he's so anointed, it's ridiculous. And he told me, he said, Forward, he said, God spoke to me. And he said, You have the anointing that's on your father. So be mindful how you carry it. I'm about his spiritual father. And I'm talking about when you hear him preach and see him move and flow in the gifts. If you ever saw his spiritual father, you know that boy, he ain't fronting, he ain't faking and trying to pretend that anointing is upon him. He said, But God told me, he said, everything you saw him do that caused him to fall, avoid that. Because that anointing is on you. It's gonna make you attractive like he was. It's going to make folk come to you and they're going to put all kind of money in your hands and they're going to do it. I mean, this boy had folk giving him $1,000 a week, one person, but he understood something. It's because I'm anointed. But if I don't protect this anointing that's on me to protect me, I can lose it all. And he has to, he walks alone because his father's mandate was to walk alone. But he, you know, we long for attention. We long to be noticed and appreciated. When the brethren would tie you up and throw you to the Philistines. You just want somebody to love you. You want somebody to appreciate you. You want somebody to validate you. Can I tell you, God validation, God appreciation, God loves you. And you got to understand if I got to spend time alone with God alone, then so be it. Then let them call me stuck up if they want to. But as long as I say stuck in the face of Jesus, everything's going to be all right. I came to tell you, you better learn the pattern. See, you got some folk now want to follow the anointing, but they're going to talk like you talk. I ain't going to take my kids to church the way mom and them took me. My, they drug me to every service. Uh-huh. Now you got to go get your kids off of drugs because you don't want to take them to church. So you got folk want to follow the man of God. I don't think you take all that. I ain't going to pray like that. My God, who, you want to pray like he prayed. Yeah, my brothers who quit praying like I prayed on shipwreck. Hallelujah. Why? Because prayer is like the umbilical cord. Prayer is where you get your nutrients from. Prayer is where you get your strength from. Prayer is what infuses you. I'm talking about communing with God, fellowshipping with God. The Bible said in Psalms that if my if I fear God, He'll pluck 
my feet out the net. If I get in the devil's net, God's going to pluck me out. But you got people now, they want the anointing, but they don't want to join themselves to the anointing by confidence and trust it. Okay, this is how I get it. How do I maintain it? This is how I got it. How do I increase it? Because you, I don't know about you. I don't want to be anointed just when I preach. You in Matthew 8, verse 18, when Jesus saw the multitude about him, he gave commandment to depart to the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, he didn't call this book, this book, I'm going to follow thee wherever you go. Heard that a bunch of times too. Jesus said unto him, the foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests. The son of man have nowhere to lay his head. What is he saying? This ain't glamorous like you think. It ain't as glorious as it looks. You see the crowd now. You see them hollering Hosanna now. They'll be saying crucify me for the sunrise. See, you got to understand. You see the crowd around me. You saw that big offering. But you know I can't even get a hotel in this city. That's what he wouldn't tell them I ain't got no house. He said I'm headed someplace. And because my face is set like a flint to go to Jerusalem. Room. They won't even give me a room and board here. So where you going to sleep at? See, if I got to sleep under the tent tonight, you ready to go under the tent? Well, you know, me and Buzz, we don't really get along too good, Lord. So uh, when you get a hotel room, call me. Quiet in Zion. But it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. And another said of his disciples, oh, this one of them that's been following him from, from afar, said unto him, Lord, Suffer me first to go and bury my father. I didn't call you first of all. Jesus said, no, no, you, you follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Oh, Jesus is so cruel. I can't believe Jesus is that harsh. Jesus said to him, you have not prioritized the anointing yet. You have not come to the place to where the anointing is the first priority. You have not come to the place where the call of God is the call above all. You ain't ready what he's telling him. That word follow right there means to follow one who proceeds, to join him as his attendant, to accompany him, sitting at the, uh, he's sitting at his feet, to be his disciple, to become his disciple, to side with his party. We ain't talking about Republican and Democrat now. Come on here. He's trying to get you to understand. Are you going to follow me? Are you going to imitate me? Are you going to walk like I walk, live like I live, consecrate like I consecrate, crucify, mortify, subdue your flesh the way I do, get your motives right with God? Matthew chapter 9. And Jesus passed forth from thence, verse 9, Matthew 9 and 9. Jesus passed forth from thence. He saw a man named Matthew. And he, he, have you noticed he's getting all these entrepreneurs? We act like Jesus only chooses riffraff. He loves all top and bottom. He passed by and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of customs. He said unto him, follow me. What did he do? Let me go bury my mama. Let me go kiss cousin them goodbye. No, no. He connected right then by faith. He rose what? Immediately and followed him. Now go to John 3. I'm, I'm, I'm shifting now. John 3. I'm trying to show you. He's calling. He's saying, come follow me. Come be my disciples. Come get trained. He's not saying come preach. He's not saying come front the service. He come, come serve. Come minister. Come on here. Come hold the offering basket. Come on here. Come on here. Come row the boat when we get across the ocean. Come follow me. No, I don't know about that, Lord. Come on. Let me teach you how to pray. Let me get you up at 4 o'clock in the morning and take you to the praise supply. Come on and follow me. Let me show you how to believe God. You used to getting that paycheck. You used to that fat bankroll. Let me show you how to believe God for your money. I don't want to learn. I don't want to learn. I'm a tax collector. I know how to get my money. John 3. I just want verse 34. For he whom God hath sent speak of the words of God, for God giveth not what? The spirit, or we could say the anointing by measure unto him. I'm trying to get you to join yourself to an anointing that's unlimited. I'm trying to get you to join yourself to an anointing that's got no cap on it. But I want you to do it by faith. Notice Jesus don't do a bunch of talk to persuade them. He's just giving them the call. And they got to make a decision. That's what Elijah said. Well, I, what I, I ain't do nothing to you. You got to choose if you're going to connect. You got to choose if you're going to connect. Because people, if you don't make a decision, let me tell you something. You got to do more than connect. You got to make a decision to stay connected. Mm -hmm. 
proud or disconnect you. Go to Mark chapter 6. Now, I want you to see here. Here's a man that's got the anointing without measure. He's got the spirit upon him without measure. It's unlimited. He's got a bountiful anointing. He's got an abundance of anointing upon him. And the Bible says these words. And he go to his hometown to preach. He go where he grew up, where he knew him at. He go in there where his daddy, he's, he was a car, his, his earthly father was a carpenter. And they say, is not this the carpenter? We're in verse 3. The son of Mary. I know his mama now. The brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon. I know his sisters. Are not his sisters here with us? And they was what? Offended at him. Why? Why are you offended at the man and you know him? That's more, than, that's more reason to have confidence. You done lived around him. You done seen his lifestyle. But you know why? Because it ain't me. What make him better than why? Why, why he got to be out front? But Jesus said unto them, now listen, they talking about the prophet, they talking about Mary's baby, they talking about James' brother, they talking about Judah's brother, and they talking about, he said, unto, he said unto them, them who? Them that saying he's just a prophet, he just married a little boy, he just James' brother, them, he said to them, a prophet, he identified himself as a prophet while they trying to identify him as James' brother, as Mary's son. He said a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house, in, his, in the hood. He could there in their presence, in his own country, among his own family. Do, have you noticed that you can go out and get the neighbor healed and folk in your house can't receive from you? They'll let you pray sometime. But don't pray long now. Hurry up and get through. My God, how long you going to pray? You still praying? You be in the waiting room a lot longer than he prayed. Quiet and silent. Watch this. And he could there do no mighty works, save that he laid his hand upon a few sick folk. Hallelujah. And he, can't, he couldn't do nothing for them folk. He had, to, he had to lead them out of the whole deal. Now watch this. And the Bible said he called unto him. He, he, he couldn't. Wait a minute. He, folk got minor diseases. Here's a man with the anointing without measure. And in this particular place, he can't do nothing. Maybe, maybe, a head, maybe a headache, maybe a hangnail. Hallelujah. And the Bible says this word. He marveled because of their unbelief. The Amplified Bible says their lack of faith in him. They had no confidence in the man that's anointed without measure. They didn't connect to the anointed by faith because they got offended. When you offended with somebody who has done nothing to you, they offended because of who he is. Hey, ain't a good thing come out of Nazareth. That boy out the East End of Little Rock. Ain't nothing down there but thugs, gangsters, and cutthroats, drug addicts. I ain't, he, child, please. I, ain't, I wouldn't go across the street to hear him. Now, the poor pit pimp can fly in out of Chicago and you will pack it out. But watch this, watch this, watch this. He went about teaching in the villages because they, they, they can't receive from him. He called unto him the 12. These are the folks that, he, that used to fish. These are the folks that used to be tax collectors. That got, they, they don't have the anointing without, they, matter of fact, they ain't got no anointing. He got it without measure. He called him, and now he's, remember, when you get joined, there's a transfer. He's about to transfer some of the anointing that's on him, that's immeasurable, up on them. So they're going to have it with a measure, and they're going to do more than he did, unlimited, just because of the lack of respect. See, sometimes we act like, ooh, he more anointed than he is. No, you respect him more than you respect him. That's all. He called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey save a staff only and no strip, no bread, no money in their purse. That means they're going to be taken care of while they travel by faith and be shod with sandals and not to put on two coats. Look at verse 12. And they went out and preached that men should repent. They ain't preaching no little watered down gospel. They preaching straight up repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with all many devils sick 
and healed them. He couldn't do it there, but they took his anointing and went out and did it with a portion of the anointing because they were connected to the anointing by faith. Look at chapter 6, I mean chapter, Luke chapter 5 now. I'm moving on into it. I want you to understand God is looking for a people that are connected to the anointing by faith. It's too many people struggling, living up in some old dead, dried up church just because they let you get the microphone in your dead, dried up state and you ain't going nowhere. They ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't even got no vision to go nowhere. You like the kids in the car just kicking it, just burning up gas. You have no destiny. You don't know what they're just riding around the town, riding and ain't even looking at the town. Been riding all night and don't even know where you've been. Luke 5 and 17, it came to pass on a certain day. Luke chapter 5, verse 17, I feel like preaching that. It came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that they were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which came out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Why are they there? They came out of every town. Why did they come? And the Bible says, and the power, the dunamis, the miracle working power of God, oh God, was present for what? To heal them. Who are they? They are the Pharisees from Judea, the Pharisees from Jerusalem, the Pharisees from out of Galilee. They there, they sick. They in the presence of a man that's anointed without measure, but yet they're receiving nothing. Why? Because they're not connecting to the anointing by faith. I'm trying to tell you, you got folks now come to the crusade and then don't connect to the anointing. They get in the prayer line. Let you pray for them just to see what you're going to do. Let me see what you got. So-and-so prayed for me. I remember back in the day when he prayed, this happened. Let me see if you got what he had back in the day. Uh, you ain't got it because I didn't get nothing. Can I tell you, you got to understand, you got to connect to that anointing by faith. It ain't, let me tell y'all something. God didn't put the gifts of the Spirit in the church to heal the church. He said these signs shall follow them that believe. They got to go out and get folk delivered. The church supposed to be living by faith. When the anointing manifests in the church, we supposed to connect to it by faith and draw from it by faith, get deposits by faith. But yet we sitting there living by feelings. When you first got saved, you didn't have no uh, measure of faith. You said, what develop so you got healed every time you got in the prayer line. Why do you think when the man of God don't ain't never saw you before, don't know you from Adam, walks out and call your name, come on here and tell you what your condition is, tell you how long you had it. That word of knowledge is to trigger your faith. And because you know ain't no way he can know that, your faith shoots up. Hallelujah. And then you get your miracle. But because you don't study the word of God and get faith, three weeks later you need that same miracle back, not another one. Oh, them symptoms then came back on me. I thought I was healed. Well, I was healed for three weeks, but looked like I done lost it. Maybe God would just let me know he could hear me. Now it's time for you to rebuke the devil by faith. Devil, you ain't nothing but a lie. I've been redeemed. I, I was healed. I am healed. You ain't putting that back on me. Get out of here with your lying self. I ain't going back into that. You ain't putting that back on me. But see, you disconnected from the anointed when you start guessing, wondering, and waving. It. But you got to connect and stay connected by faith. Devil, you ain't nothing but a lie. I know I'm healed. I ain't had no pain for three weeks. I ain't taking no pain now. Get your pain and get on up out of here. You got to understand and we in a time now when folks got to connect to the anointing by faith. They was there with their sickness. How would God send healing power to well folks? The power of God was there not to heal, but to heal them, to heal the folks in the building, to heal the Pharisees, to heal those that came. You got to understand that like it is now. Preachers got so much pride, you can call everything but their name, and they sit there like they ain't got it. No, they got three bottles of pills in their pocket. You sitting in the call their condition, hallelujah. God wanted Hill it is over here. I was when Benny Hinn came to Little Rock. I volunteered and I was one of the volunteers. So I got in early and I saw folks for three hours outside in the, I mean, lined up in the heater waiting to get in the Coliseum. Then we get in the Coliseum and the section that I'm working in, that was a woman I knew. Her daughter bought her there because she had cancer. Bought her there to be healed. And the power of God began to fall. And all of a sudden she said, I got to get out of here. The girl said, Mama. Don't you feel this anointing? He ain't prayed for the sick yet. They hear they're getting healed in that section. He said, just wait. I got to go. She got up and walked out. It wasn't three good minutes. He turned to that section. He said, God's healing cancer in this section. If you got cancer, stand to your feet. Folks stood up. Power hit them. Growth was melting. Cancer was leaving. She died of cancer. She left for the anointing came because she didn't have time to connect to the anointing by faith. She was present and got up and left early early for where you're going you don't leave the waiting room early you sitting out there four hours you say child i'm still in this waiting room what you doing i'm waiting i'm waiting to be waited on 
Then they take you back there and put you in a room for another hour. And you sitting back there. And Lord forbid they take your clothes and put you in a gown. Your show can't leave now. You just back there waiting. Doctor come in, don't say 10 words to you. And write you a prescription. Say, here, go get this for you. But in the house of God, I ain't got time for that. Huh? The power of God was present. Why? To heal them, yet they didn't get healed. Listen, they didn't leave. They stayed there. The power, I want you to catch this. They're there. The power is there. They're sick. The power came for one reason. That's to heal. Why they didn't get healed? If the power there to heal them, why don't the power heal them? The power came to heal them. They there, they need healing. But the power that's there to heal them don't heal them that need healing. Why? One reason missing. They didn't connect to it by faith. Why? Because they got an attitude about the one that's anointed. I ain't getting healed in his meeting. My wife and I know a woman that's dead right now. Because she, I ain't, they, them preachers ain't going to pray for me and get no glory or testimony. I prayed for her and she got out the wheelchair. Well, she wouldn't receive prayer. So when they got out the wheelchair, she was in the cab. Come on here. I came to tell you, pride and ignorance, arrogance will kill you. You better change your mindset and understand when the anointing is present, I'm not finna argue with it. I'm finna connect to the anointing by faith. I'm gonna put my faith out. The power of God is present to heal me. The doctors can't heal me. They done told me ain't no cure. Ain't nobody never got healed from this. Well, doc, that's what you say. But I know a God that specializes and I'm gonna put my faith in him and I'm going to trust God. I'm gonna get in the word. I'm going to take my word. I'm going to take the gospel like you want me to take your pills. Yeah, I'm going to get in this word. We'll take pills three times a day. Won't read the word. Won't read three scriptures a day. And behold, men bought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy and they sought means to bring him in and to get him in the presence of Jesus to lay him before Jesus they sought means watch this when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the mother too they were seeking a way to get in they saw the crowd but they had so much faith the crowd couldn't deter them you go someplace oh well it didn't look like it was no parking spot you parked three blocks from the party and wasn't no shuttle to come get you and walk in the dark. Come on here through the alley to get to the club. Come on here. A boy, when the diplomat was kicking in Little Rock Focus, going to the dip. But hallelujah, you can't come to the house of God. You got to make a decision here. When King Lounge was downtown, Brooke was running down the King's Lounge. And you won't come to the King's house. You won't come into the King's kingdom and get deliverance. But I came to tell you, these men said, listen here, we're looking for a way to get in here. This is a big crowd, but some kind away. We can't push through it. They got the door blocked. They got the windows blocked. But see, in the Middle East, every house has got a roof. And they got stairways on the side of the building to get you to the rooftop. So when they couldn't get in the door, they couldn't get in the window. They said, I tell you what, we got them on a gurney. It's four of us. Two of y'all get up there. We're going to get down here. Buddy, we're going to carry you upstairs and we're going to get you in through the sunroof. They get up there. Oh my God. And ain't no roof up there. And ain't no sunroof up there. That's all right. They found an axe, a hammer, or something, and they chopped through 14 inches of plaster. I call that reckless faith. I call that determined faith. Faith that won't be denied. They said, we here. We feel this power. He don't know we here. We got to get you in his presence. The power of God is here to heal and we gonna connect to it by faith. So they broke up the roof of the house. 14 inches of plaster thick. They broke through a hole big enough to let a man down on his gurney. And the Bible says Jesus looked up and saw their faith. His power was present. Nobody got healed until faith showed up. This man wasn't even there to hear the message. He just got there while the glory was moving. Look at, look, look at it, look at it, look at it. Look at verse 20. When he saw their faith, he said unto him, wait a minute. He saw his, their faith, but he spoke to the man that was on the, on the gurney. He didn't say nothing to the Pharisees that's sitting there sick. He spoke to where faith was drawing his attention. Faith drew the attention. Faith calls the power to be directed. Your faith can direct the power of God to you. And the scribes and the Pharisees, watch this, pay attention, began to reason, saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? They didn't say this out loud, y'all. Watch this. But when Jesus perceived what? Their 
thought. They didn't open their mouth and say anything. They sitting there thinking this. But see, Jesus is in the spirit now. The power is present. He perceived what they thinking, and he answered their thoughts. And he said, oh, you, 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 you having that issue? What's easy to say? You see him be forgiven you, but rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man, he didn't say the Son of God, did he? That the Son of Man had power upon the earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they was all amazed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who was all these folk that got amazed? Them same Pharisees that was there sick. Ain't, can't nobody else get in. Ain't no new folk. These folk that got the place jam-packed, sitting there thinking in their mind, now they mesmerized. Because what happened? Somebody connected to the power that was there to heal them. They didn't get healed. They just got mesmerized. And you got saints like that now. Go that leg grew out three I saw it with my own I seen it it just grew out just as smooth and stopped even with the other one I can't tell you how it did I was looking at it one, one man was preaching and the leg grew he had the doctor to come look at the leg grow out and the, the doctor looked at the leg grow out the doctor swiveled the hips measured the leg he said I, I, I saw it with my own eyes went back and sat down he told his wife what he saw that was a trick he said it wasn't no trick they back there arguing about what he saw she, I don't believe it and not, honey I'm a medical doctor the leg grew out no oh, that's just that, that's, he, that's magic that's, that's, that's he a magician that, nah that didn't work Immediately he arose from them, took up the bed and walked Amen. and left there. April the 10th through the 14th, we're having a faith clinic right here at 9101 Lou Drive at the Reality of the Gospel Ministry. That's right. We're going to have a faith clinic. We're going to get your faith together. Amen. Monday morning, 10 a.m. kicks it off. We're going to be here Monday through Friday, two services a day, the 10th through the 14th. That opening service, we're going to have uh, the faith technicians, Pastor Philip. Steele will be here the Monday morning and the Monday night. And then his wife, Pastor Michelle Steele, will be here Tuesday morning and Tuesday night. And then we're having Reverend Kathy Dorsch to come that Wednesday morning and Wednesday night. And then I will be a, your anchor man as always, but this time I'll be doing two. I'll be doing Thursday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, and Friday night. That's a faith clinic. Every service is going to be on your faith. The just shall live by his faith. And you got to get your faith together for this hour that we're living in. Too many things are happening. Too many sneak attacks are hitting the saints. You know, uh, one of my friends said, if you live casually, you'll become a casualty. Well, that's not acceptable. You got to make a decision. When it comes to faith, you're not going to have a casual faith walk. So make plans to meet us here in all of these meetings. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you right here. At 9101 Lou Drive. Courage through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640 91, Little Rock, Arkansas. 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's Word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.